What are you doing? Um, reviewing Punch Drunk Club? Why are you reviewing that movie? That's a weird movie. I, I, I don't know. If you had no idea what was going on in the intro, then you probably haven't seen Punch Drunk Love, and you're still welcome to watch this video. There's a special segment for the people who haven't watched the movie, as there is a special segment for the people who have seen the movie. But, my respect for you has decreased a little bit. So I'm going to tell you, before watching Punch Drunk Love, what to expect, because I think it's a very different and unique film. Then, I'm going to give you my brief thoughts on the film, and the last segment is going to be for the people who have seen the movie, and are kind of confused, and don't really understand it. I'm going to help you understand Punch Drunk Love. And the time codes will be in the description as well. So, let's get right into it. Are we not? I thought we were transitioning, are we not? Okay, guys, let's transition. Now. Transition. Now. Transition. Now. Before watching Punch Drunk Love, I thought it was going to be two types of movies that I'm not really a fan of. A romance movie and an Adam Sandler movie. And you might be thinking, Adam Sandler? In a masterpiece? Or you must be thinking, Adam Sandler? What great fart jokes are in this movie? I think if you hate some Adam Sandler comedies, It was a total disgrace. You'll at least like this. This is the polar opposite of any Adam Sandler comedy. It's got beautiful cinematography, a great character study of the one man, Barry Egan, played by The Sand Band. The story is about Barry Egan, a lonely, anxious man working at a plunger company. His one sister brings in Lena into his life. Then, the romance begins. Before the romance sparked, Barry calls a phone number looking for love and buys pudding cups to get flying points from an airplane company. It's a very weird movie, and if you don't just go with it, you might not like it. You're going to expect a beautiful and charming movie, but at its core, you experience life from this one man, Barry Egan. Punch Drunk Love wouldn't be what it is without Paul Thomas Anderson, who, if you don't know, because you don't, you're not a, you, you don't watch, because because all you do is watch superhero movies. Paul Thomas Anderson, he is a director, and he directed and written this film. Even if you're not invested with this story, which is impossible to do, you can't deny that this film is a well-crafted film. The visuals, everything about it, you can tell there's hard work and a lot of detail put into this film. Paul Thomas Anderson really directs Adam Sandler to give it his all, which Sandler does, which is a shocker for me and basically everyone and Paul Thomas Anderson the director and writer he makes it what it is he chooses these elements and really builds on them whether it's Adam Sandler being really weird or Robert Ellswick giving these great shots in here sure the story is very simple but in the perspective of this introverted awkward super awkward man named Barry it's just a whole new perspective and you really go inside the mind of Barry and it's this huge character study on this one man and you see the world how he sees it you have this really unique score from John Bryan which really makes the film feel very chaotic because it's just sounds of just random things and it just like what? some people might find that weird where it's like it's, Tape sounds, just sounds that don't go together, but they don't go together, but it goes together with the film, because the film is very chaotic. Now I'm going to talk about why you people don't understand Punch Drunk Love, and why I am right, and I have the right answers, because you people, you, you people that watch Punch Drunk Love once, I see, I see it three times in less than six months, I know what I'm talking about. 
let's dive into these questions that you might have, and I have the answers because I am the best movie reviewer. I am the best movie reviewer, number one. How come, like, Barry at the end, like, he's super confident about himself and he's, like, super jacked and he lifts up like a harmonium, like, what? At the beginning, he's pretty weak. Lena, who is a girlfriend in the film of Barry's, Lena makes Barry more confident about himself and Barry had no one to trust to because he had no one to talk to and then Lena comes in and kind of fills that void that Barry had. She makes him more emotionally stronger but what Paul Thomas Anderson does is he also shows on film that Barry is physically getting stronger and you see like at the beginning he was getting knocked out by these guys left and right. Bam, boom, boom. The end of the film, they mess with his girl, he messes with them. And it's not just this abrupt thing where it's like, Barry was very self-conscious, now he loves himself. You see throughout the film, like the dinner scene, it slowly happens where he's not really look, making eye contact, but he's kind of trusting her because he likes her. But then around the end of the film, he's just talking to her, making full eye contact. At the beginning of the film, why did a car just come when Barry was sipping his coffee? It just comes and then it crashes. Does that ever come back up in the film? No. But does it serve a purpose? You betcha. I feel like the point of the car crash was to show what's going to happen in the rest of the film because the car crash was very abrupt and very chaotic. And that's what the rest of the film is, very abrupt and chaotic. Before discussing one of the biggest questions that people might have about this film. I'm gonna talk about some things that I definitely missed on first watch and you might as well. Throughout the film, Barry is wearing a blue suit. I know that because I put those up there and not because I watched the film. He stands out because most of the walls painted around him are white and so bright blue and white, they're kind of different because white is just kind of bland. We're not here to talk about colors, we're here to talk about the film. They made the walls white, and Barry's wearing this bright blue suit, so he stands out more in the film, and also stands out as a character, because all the other characters are wearing just normal, kind of darker clothing, where Barry, he stands out more, and just because the type of person he is, he stands out around the crowd because he's different. You see throughout the film, it's no lie, that Barry, he's a paranoid guy. That rhymed, and I'm not Dr. Zeus. One of the biggest scenes that shows it, but in subtle ways, is when he's calling the f he's calling the, the number to he's looking for some love. You know, you can see when he's calling. He doesn't want anyone to know. He thinks this is confidential stuff, and so he asks the person, "This is confidential, right? No one knows." While he's talking on the phone, saying that stuff, you see him close the blinds because he doesn't want anyone to see him. He also locks the door, which might be odd because. Why would someone just come in? They knock, you know? But maybe one of the sisters barged in on him when something went down. He also has a TV turned on. You might think, because he's watching TV, but why would he keep it on if he's not watching TV? Because he doesn't want anyone else who knocks on the door or is beside him to hear that he's on the phone. Time to bring up the biggie, the huge one, the biggest question in history of everything, and that is, what is the point of the harmonium? I'm not the first one to cover this, but the harmonium serves a purpose because it comforts Barry. He tried the same with the calling service, someone or something that he can trust. And the calling service, you know how that ended. So he tried to fill that void, and so that's why Barry just keeps on touching the harmonium. It sounds weirder when I'm talking about it, but that's really what's going on. Everything around him is just crumbling, and so the only thing that he has is the harmonium. There was no one in his life that he could trust until Lena came. That's why Lena has this whole impact on Barry, because Barry is not just this normal guy who's looking for love. He's this messed up, anxious, nervous wreck. You see him touch the harmonium, after he ends the call with his sister, and you see it where Lena is introduced by his sister, everything just crumbles around him, and he doesn't know what to do, so when everyone leaves, he touches the harmonium. And then when he's calling the guy, talking about his putting points for air miles, he gets super stressed out. Instead of like talking about it to Lena or something, he grabs the harmonium, because 
he thinks that's gonna help him. It's like this weird addiction. And so Lena, she fills that void that Barry was just needed. He needed someone to trust. He needed someone that cared about him. And that's why Fruit Punch Drink Love is a masterpiece. And that's a wrap, okay? We're, we're done, right? Can, can we... I thought we were gonna cut cut to black, like now. Are we, are we not? Cut to black now. Cut to black now.